limitations, which will probably like all the plans going on here. It's going to slowly shift the podcast out of this space. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> Unless, well, I don't know. Because I don't know where I'll store everything now. Yeah. Um, that's true. Well, because the closet. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff we're, going. We're sort of. The plan is to do something different. We, we won't disclose it just yet. Yes. Just Not in case. <laughs> well, I can cut this part out. <laughs> no, um, it's fun to make it tantalizing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we don't really have that storage yeah, space so. anymore for our normal, like storing all this stuff. Huh. Yeah, you're gonna have to. We're gonna have to bust down the wall. <laughs> like, I just keep saying, we'll just have to take yeah. over the tanning salon. Yeah. They've got two locations. They can handle themselves yeah. on Lansdowne. <laughs> this and their second location here could just be for podcasting and uh, videography, yeah. any sort of photo. Just be the studio. Just, just be the studio space. Yeah. And then you guys can do all your guided meditations and flow stuff here. Yeah. I mean, be perfect. And, and they'll just have to live. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just take one of the tanning rooms. Maybe you don't have to bust the whole thing down. Maybe just, just kind of dig a little. Yeah. Notch out of their oh space. Gosh. Yes, make a little cave. Yeah. Like, you're like digging oh, through. Like, cave Hello. Too. We could do a salt cave with oh, that too. Yes. That's not Travel true. through the salt cave into the to podcast. Get to, room. Yes. Or we could oh. podcast in the salt oh, cave. I wonder how that would affect like the the, the equipment. Know. Yeah, I would there be there an would issue be with sort that? Of, like, interference or yeah, something? Yeah, I don't because know. Of the I'm assuming minerals pole. have like the same magnetic pole as like yeah. other. Yeah. So I went. Well, I wonder if there's a whole bunch. Like that times a whole room. Yeah. I don't know. We'll never find out. <laughs> <laughs> Science can you tell us. I wouldn't yeah. We'll never know. I mean people record videos and stuff in salt rooms occasionally, don't they? So Yeah, that's true. You probably. don't see a lot though. No. Yeah. It's supposed to be like a peaceful Yeah. I think of... that's usually why you don't see a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you should use it for guided meditation, I'm sure, or something. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Cool. Rebecca Foot, ladies and Hello. gentlemen. Hi, it's me. <laughs> there she <Best>. is. <laughs> You've seen me on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. So, yeah, in some places. Yeah. So, uh, do you want me to? to yeah, you take lead the, the way. Show? Okay, cool. We talked about that, but I didn't want to assume. No, it's. Um, but then I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, like yeah, that. we've got. Be- thanks for being here. We've got Becca with us. She is a human as well as a dog walker. Yeah. Uh, pause PTBO if you haven't heard. But uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, and then we'll we'll dive in. Um, I am a wild lady, um, <laughs> definitely free spirited human being that just like likes animals, and I think that that's kind of where like the dog walking stuff started for me, anyway. I think it's a lot of who I am, and that's kind of been really translated into why I'm doing this in the first place. I just like animals, the end. Like, that's kind of like, Becca, the animal person, period. Yeah, it's true. You know, every, and... Every animal I've known is just, like, worship her. They just flock to me also, wild animals, and regular they, domesticated animals. I, I love being, animals. like, the human Ace Ventura of, like... <laughs> Like the real life version. That's kind of like my life goal. That's awesome. But yeah, I guess dog walking for me started um, when I left a big bank job. Uh, I kind of jumped into the risky pool of entrepreneurship and decided to, you know, start working with animals. I worked with Gussie and Company. Love them. Great company in Toronto if you're looking to walk your dog. Um, And they kind of taught me the ropes on that. In Toronto, it's much different though than in Peterborough because in Toronto, you go a condo. You collect right. five dogs and you come back down and walk mm-hmm. them in the neighborhood and go back up. Mm-hmm. But here, dog walking is much more wild and fun because we have Haroldtown and Trent and all those places. So it's much more natural. Mm-hmm. I like this specific area for this job. So yeah, I pick up dogs. I bring them out to nature. We run around and then I bring them home and yeah. it's the best. And I hope they just live their best lives. <laughs> That's awesome. And the people that own them too, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love them. All of my clients are amazing, yeah. first of all. But secondly, like, I think that's a big thing about Peterborough is the community here is really open and welcoming to new small businesses, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, everybody's been super accommodating when it comes to like, hey, like, how does dog walking work? What do you do? Like, what's going on? How, you know, and I like to provide little pup dates when they're done their walk and pictures and videos and stuff like that so they feel like they're on the walk with me. But I don't know. I feel like they appreciate it more here than they necessarily do in Toronto. Yeah. 
everybody's getting emails and pictures float at them all the time from work. So it's like, yeah, it's different. Yeah, no, I like is Becca walks my dog often <laughs> and I uh, I look forward to those I like wait for them and if yeah. I don't get pictures I'm like is everything okay <laughs> is everything all right? I know most people are like okay so what's in a picture day what happened and like it'll be like the phone froze or something because it was so cold but mm. in the summer it's constant it's mm. easy to do yeah, yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. Is that so? You send those directly to the clients. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's such like a nice. Um... You get everything. You get like oh, yeah. poop updates, not, <laughs> not pictures usually, but no. just if how much texture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it was, if it was a, if it was a bad day for poops, or if it was a good day for poops, or they didn't really pee, or if their pee was a strange color, it's a lot of. You get it all. A lot of information. <laughs> it's nice with emojis. It's a lot with of emojis. <laughs> oh, very much. Often. My like signature brand is that I'm littering everything with emojis. <laughs> That's a good that. word because you get like the little sprinkles for pee, you get a poop emoji for poop, you get sunshine for a nice walk, like you get it all. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, I like I like connecting those things. It's fun. That's yeah. awesome though. That's um, I mean clearly that is something that will set you apart for sure. And I hope so. I, I it sounds like I'm like I want to experience that. <laughs> My dogs don't really. Our dogs don't walk. They're like five pound peak yeah, knees. Their legs that are like live this long. <laughs> Yeah, well, and they would probably get out in the snow and be like, okay, so this 10 minutes was nice. Uh, yeah. You carry me now? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Not even 10 minutes. More like, especially Mishka, it's like just a yeah, few. Yeah, she just likes to stand. Yeah. Aww. And sniff everything <laughs> and not walk. This was a nice sniff. Can we go back inside, yeah. Dad? <laughs> but no, that's, that's, um, is that like, does that come naturally to you? Is that just, or or did you learn that sort of customer um experience kind of stuff somewhere yeah I would say like I've worked in a million different industries before this too so like Starbucks was probably my first one it was my longest one for 10 years Mm. and I would say like I very much will attribute a lot of my customer service based skills from them Mm. um because yeah they teach you that exactly what the customer wants is exactly what the customer gets in that type of way obviously it's starbucks you've seen the side of their cups they have so many different ways to like modify things right yeah and i think that that environment really cultivated very much a customer service person in me from a very young age it was one of my first jobs and yeah i carried that definitely throughout everything else since it's been i don't know it's been a good experience in that way i think um but yeah, dogs are also like easy to talk to and like easy to deal with most of the time. So it sounds silly, but I talk to the dogs the same way I talk to the people. <laughs> and I think that's definitely also what sets me apart is that I bring that like customer service thing all the way down to the dog level because I don't yeah. know, I think that they appreciate it. And yeah, they do. And that's what owners do, right? So yeah. They want that experience. Yeah, and then now when some of the dogs hear my voice, it's awesome because they, like, freak it's out. I can't even play her, like, Instagram stories in front of my dog without, like, a scene being caused. Like, she will, like, scream and yeah. chase her tail in circles and then go wait at the door because wow. she thinks Becca's coming. Yeah. Like, I can't even say I the word it. Becca. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just trigger words for many of my dogs now. Yeah. And most of them include, like, walkies, treats, Becca, yeah. Harold Town, like, uh, like, and they just go... Like berserk for it. I love it. Yeah, it's like it's a lovely thing. So if you want your dog to have a great experience and uh, also become slightly codependent on your dog walker, <laughs> yes, that does happen. Actually, I've learned now. Yeah. So yeah. we were on a walk one time. So I go for walks with Becca yeah. often as well. And there were it was uh, myself and my dog, and then our friend Hillary and her dog, and Shelby was there yeah. with Burton and Tekken. I don't. I think you were walking them, but yeah. Um, you walked away because we had this awesome dog named Rudy who just doesn't move. He just <laughs> sometimes he just goes rocks. and collects rocks. He's a ama- he's an amazing Birdie's Mountain Dog, but he'll go and just like collect and rocks. He just doesn't want to walk. Like, it's and that's and that's job. fine. That's what he wants to do sometimes. But <laughs> the other dogs like to run. But yeah. we so we she went to go get him because he just wasn't following us, and then. The rest of us who already had our own personal dogs with us, they just chased her. <laughs> like, we could not, we couldn't, and we were calling, like, Mela, come back! And nothing. Just like, wherever just, I go, they're Becca always... Becca is pack leader. Yeah. With and you. so she had a team of, like, eight dogs behind her dealing with Rudy. <laughs> yeah. It was good. Yeah. And I would say, like, speaking of about experiences, like, my animal skill set came from, like, Trent and 
Guelph, I would say, in that sense. So, like, my customer service, I would definitely attribute to my previous jobs. But dog-wise, the reason why I know kind of what's going on is because, I, like, I have the education to back it up. My Trent career, basically, was evolutionary biology. Okay, um, cool. And I did a lot of vertebrate zoology. I really, really focused on, like, heavier, larger animals and that kind of breakdown. And then when I went to Guelph and did my horse industry technician, um, I was really hoping to go into more larger animal veterinary. And I did. I worked at a couple different veterinary clinics after that. Um, but that aspect of animal work is very much surrounded by illness and death in most cases. So it's like not the, mm. not the greatest way to experience animals where I feel like this, I'm out there. I'm with them. I'm living their best life. I get to see them in their prime. I get to see them like running around the snow and enjoying finding <laughs> new sniffs and like, or I guess I call it checking their mail. Cause we always go on the same trail, <laughs> you know? And I don't know. I feel like the educational back- background really has helped me also set myself apart from many other dog walking services. Cause cool. they're out there. They're easy to put together. It's not hard to walk a dog, (laughs) but to know all the cues and first aid stuff, I think there's Mm -hmm. a lot behind that. That's very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you, like, I've been on some of your walks uh, because we are friends. Yes. But how do you, like, it's a little stressful on my end because there's like sometimes upwards to like eight (laughs) wild dogs like sprinting around. Like, how do you handle I typically that. don't bring that many on unless I know I have another human with coming with me, right? Mm-hmm. So when I'm usually by myself and there's four of us, like four dogs and myself, I don't find they're that chaotic with me. I find when I bring another person and I add some extra dogs, it can like feel really scary. Sometimes when the dogs wander off, if we're doing an off leash, that can be a little bit tricky, but I usually really try to bring most dogs that have recall on an off leash walk. Um, but I guess handling that, is just I respect the fact that the dogs are going to respect me. It sounds really cheesy, but I think that's what I put most of my faith into on those walks is that Mm. you came in this car. You Mm. have to get back in this car in order to go home with me. Mm. Otherwise, you don't get to see mom and dad. Like, And they all want to see mom and dad. Whenever I said, like, say any of their owner's names, like if I say Mila Mm. and she's not near you, or Telsey and she's not near you, she's like, where? But where is Telsey? (laughs) You know, like... They all, I think, have an affinity to their home and their parents. Mm-hmm. And they, I think they understand, at least in my experience, they understand I'm not their parent. Mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. the person that feeds them and does that those mm-hmm. things for the most part. Um, but, yeah, I think they always want to go out and come back. So I think like, there's a bit of a controlled chaos yeah. in the sense that, like, I know we're going back. And I set that in motion, hopefully, by kind of having that attitude mm-hmm. when we're out on the walk. I'm like, hey, be as wild as you need to be, but no... We're going mm-hmm. home, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. It's more sensical, I guess. More than interesting. Yeah. It's just. It's. I think as someone who doesn't walk multiple dogs, like it's. To me, I'm just like, always counting and always making sure that like everyone's around. And so when mm-hmm. you're you're just walking and like talking and enjoying your time, mm-hmm. I'm like, how is this just like? People so have told me on Instagram too. So they're like, so I'm much. stressed when I see you release the dogs and say, let's go. Like I see these five dogs fly, and you're just like, okay, this is a nice day. <laughs> like, yeah, it is. But I I also like I check as many car how many cars are in the parking lot or right. if if we're not in an off leash area, you know, like how many people have other dogs. Can we do off leash today? Should I be having attachments? So like I try and bring things also to make myself feel calm mm-hmm. if there is some sort of situation. Yeah. yeah. Is there also like a, when I guess you've probably seen as the dogs are always together, a lot of them probably go on the same walks together. Does there become like a pack mentality where they stick together more? And so you don't yeah. have to worry as much that they're, they're going to just go disappear. Yeah, actually, we have, like, kind of a perfect pack. Um, Mila, Stella, Luda, Burton, Tekken. Mm-hmm. Uh, calling out all those dogs, yes. Um, but <laughs> I listen to this podcast. Uh, yeah. Hello, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea DeRoss, Stu, shall we? How you guys doing? Um, Chelsea. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, that five pack has met each other and walked each other so many times. I can take one of the dogs, Tekken, who doesn't do... Um, off leash typically mm-hmm. I can actually let him go off leash with those dogs oh. and he will stick around stay and come back mm-hmm. typically um, so they've <laughs> almost 
started to develop like a really cool pack mentality bond. Yeah. And mm-hmm. because they're seeing each other usually like Monday, Wednesday, Friday for that particular group. Um, yeah. And then Aria is really great too. If I have Aria and Atlas on any walks, um, yeah. Tia's dogs, mm-hmm. they, they also kind of help keep those. Oh yeah. Those wanderers in a little bit. Which is nice. Yeah. It's very so, cool. So let's talk like you've had some not so fun walks. Oh, How do you yes. handle these things? Oh, so, yes. Like, you're dealing with animals. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like, there's potential for chaos. Oh, yeah. So how do you, like, I mean, walk me through it, because you've got, you do meet and greets, you assess kind of personality of dogs, and then you put them together, and, like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And there's definitely been harder days where, like, um, I've been physically attacked by a dog, and dogs have had fights. Um when, you know, personalities didn't exactly appear the way that they did upon meeting and greeting them. Um, but in those instances, it's just like, I've melted down for sure before, but in a way that hopefully, you know, didn't reflect upon the dog. Like I try not to bring my anxiety to the dog. It might happen. But for the most part, I usually have a little first aid kit on me somewhere, some sort of pliers, tweezers, stuff. Um, cause porcupines are a huge risk mm-hmm. right now. They have been for the last like three months. And so I'm constantly pulling out quills and things like that. So it's just, I think also being prepared that those things could happen. Mm-hmm. Like that's the risk of dogs and working with animals is that there could be bites. Certain dogs might not like each other that might've liked each other once. That's okay. If people change the sort of dogs. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, just being prepared for a couple things. I think I just try and like work myself through it mentally and like talk myself through it Mm -hmm. and then if I have another person obviously Mm -hmm. it's great to have them as like a go-to if there's like some sort of fight like hey you know can you take these guys and go this way or you know do you have anything in your car gauze wise if we have like you know a bite or something Mm -hmm. I like to kind of call upon other people if I can um if I'm solo however like I just try to have as much on me to be prepared to kind Mm -hmm. of defeat those things so I feel like if you're mentally prepared to go into something, it's not as intense as if you sprung upon you. Mm-hmm. I think if you just kind of like not expect the worst, but just be prepared, cautiously prepared mm-hmm. that you might run into a porcupine today. A dog might bite another dog or what have you. Mm-hmm. If you kind of go in knowing like these are the risks, I think you can kind of check yourself before it gets to the point where you're really having a meltdown or something like right. that. But they happen too because humans are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but when they happen, and if you're feeling like you need to meditate, you should probably come to Flow Spot. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> and think about your thoughts. Yeah. For a slow well, time in various places. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally. Um, so, as you mentioned, you came from Toronto with, uh, yeah. with walking dogs and everything. How did you land in Peterborough? Ooh. I've been in and out of Peterborough now for so long. I started here in like 2007 when I went to Trent. Okay, right. Um, and then I've been, I just keep moving back. I'm not really entirely sure what it is, but I just like, it feels like home here for me, even though I'm not from here. This mm. is, this is home. Yeah. Peterborough has always felt that way. And I don't know if it's just like the community, the core, mm. the closeness to nature. Like, it's nice that we have like suburbs and city like right here, but then like, just outside, not even 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. You have wilderness. Um, so, yeah, so I think I just, I like Peterborough a lot. I like the people. I like the now, but like budding community that's happening for entrepreneurs too. For sure. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And it's all younger people that are like really taking charge um, yeah, of what cool. they want to do. And I like, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, when did, when did Pause Peterborough get started? April of last year of 2019. I thrust it into existence and oh gosh that was scary <laughs> I was like okay so do I have clients now how do I get clients what do I how do you yeah. people don't know who I am like I I started it and I was like oh yeah people are gonna want their dogs walked obviously <laughs> duh mm-hmm. but I didn't think about it being like a fairly new industry for Peterborough like there oh, is okay. other dog walking companies for yep. sure and they're great Um, and they operate on like kind of a maximum basis. So once they get to 25 clients, they kind of cap themselves where I, I want 
I want all the dogs. I, want, <laughs> I would like all of the dogs. <laughs> Give your dogs to Becca. Give them to her. Um, so I'm really hoping to like expand upon that and be more than just like, okay, yeah, I walk 25 dogs and I'm done. Like I want to be a full range of like pet care services. I want to ha- eventually build a team of people that like also mm. like to walk dogs and that kind of stuff. That's cool. So yeah. how does... Um... Obviously, there's a lot of the the stuff that comes very naturally with the dog walking. How how is the experience of the other side of of like the businessy stuff? Ooh, that I'm still <laughs> learning. I yeah. would say I think that that's um, something that I kind of picked up on a little bit working throughout my previous careers. Sure, um, but that's definitely not the easiest thing. It's not. I'm not a business centric person. I'm a people person. I'm an animal mm-hmm. person. So like the business administrative organizational stuff. Mm-hmm. Hi, not my biggest strong suit, <laughs> but I'm learning. And I like the challenge that that presents. I like mm-hmm. learning new things. And I like that this is an area that I'm not extremely comfortable in. So like, I like getting comfortable in the uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. That's a fun That's challenge. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, my brain just left me. <laughs> Bye, Bye, brain. See you later. See you later. Yeah, have a great time over there. <laughs> Um, well I've got another question with that because um, it seems like a topic that you get quite um, passionate about is um, is like the supporting of local business I love that and maybe talking about the dichotomy of of like what's a true local business versus an MLM I love this question oh RJ heartstrings thank you yes oh yes build this up I love this question um yeah, so I, just just as context for anybody not familiar, M- MLM is multi level marketing company, yes. um, and so we'll we'll probably get into some examples. So, oh yes, go I've ahead. been a part of a few actually. I think oh, okay. that's why I have such a strong, passionate um, pursuit to actually support real local businesses where I know you're the owner of this business and you've mm-hmm. put it together with your own two hands. Because now that I've done it, also. I see how hard it can be and how many challenges you can get presented with. And with those kind of mail in multi-level marketing companies where they send you your like box, your starting box with all your, you know, stuff in it that you may or may not have had to purchase for 500, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> to get all that product to start your parties and stuff. That's not how businesses start. They're not just like handed to you to just go ahead and try and flourish and go be your own CEO, even though I own all of the rights to this product and I'm going to take hundred percent of the proceeds and give you a small cut. That's not (laughs) how a business starts. And I think that's where my really fiery angsty passion comes in because I I know they can work for some people. I know that there's like Arvon Young Living, like all of those, Mm -hmm. you know, big, and they do, they, they can be, you know, really lucrative for some people, but I don't love that the people that they focus on, the people they target are the stay at home moms. They are the vulnerable people who, yes, they do need a little bit of extra income, but like you're probably a creative genius or, you know, what have you probably have some sort of strong suit, start something local Mm -hmm. and contribute to your community actively. I think I also like that aspect when a small business is actively trying to build up the community and like make people in Mm -hmm. it better or make people's lives better. And I feel like a lot of that stuff is just, consumer product Mm -hmm. you're just selling consumables to people and yes we all have to purchase consumables but i don't feel like that's environmentally friendly for everybody to get airdropped their specific package every week all the time Uh i'm like all of this is going against the nature of where we should be going not Mm -hmm. back towards like bartering and trading in the local business kind of service way yeah it's interesting Mm -hmm. like the the motive of of a, an entrepreneur, like you're, you are trying to fulfill a need in your community, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and that's like, you're trying to help people relax so that they can live a better life. Like yeah. I'm helping people move their bodies so that they can live a better life. You're helping people walk their dogs, they have more time in their life. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting, like the motive of an MLM is more about, like, it's not necessarily fulfilling need. It's just like giving people something to sell. Yeah. Um, because I don't, I don't sure. really need Arvon products or mm-hmm. Avon products or Pampered Chef. Like, I don't need them. No. Um, but the person, the need they're fulfilling is that person who's selling needs income. Yeah. So it's just, it's an interesting, like, the drive is a little bit more salesy, a little bit more money-based. 
yeah. than it is about, you know, community care and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's how I, 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 I've separated them as well. That's a good point. It's how do you fit and help the community or how do you just like give people like a small amount of income to be able to spend into the community? Like, I don't know. I feel like it's like the teach a man a fish kind of thing, right? Like it's that whole old saying. And I just, I don't know. I just don't feel like the intentions behind an MLM company are to really build up. I think it's really just to get out mass product and have that mm-hmm. that look. Oh, I know three friends. So like my three friends can also sell Arbonne and then I'll be above them. And then, yeah. you know, and then I'll get their earnings. And it's like, well, if you look at how that works, that is a pyramid scheme, <laughs> which, I, which are illegal. They've just worked their ways around doing business illegally. Mm. And I'm like, that's pyramid also. Pyramid schemes illegal? Yeah. Pyramid schemes are illegal. What's, what, say more about that. Um, the, yeah, the laws against them in both the U S and Canada are that they're not legally businesses. They're not legally uh-huh. allowed. So what MLMs have done is they call them rebranded themselves as network marketing, especially yeah. now in the social media age. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so the way they go about it is that you don't need technically to have three people under you to make money. If you yourself are selling all of the product. Right. So they've like kind of eliminated the, the whole like, oh, you don't need other friends. But if you have it would work. three friends, you get the role. In. So they've kind of like made it almost like a gray area. Interesting. And mm-hmm. in which to me, any business that has to go about, you know, being successful by avoiding a bunch of clearly yeah. in place laws to exist. I'm like, you probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't work for them. It's probably yeah, not we, a good business. We talk about that a fair bit here. Just like <laughs> the idea that what what's the energy behind your drive? Like, yeah. is it a little bit gray or dark, or is it is it light energy? Like, are you actually attracting people out of like love and joy, and the fact that your what you are actually offering to people is something that you're passionate about, right? It's yeah, yeah. Uh, or is it avoiding things and running through the maze, hoping that you know you'll pick up some bags of money on the way? Yeah, and that's I, I think that that's the other aspect is that they're very targeted around in income. That's a really big thing. That's money is their about. money is their center. Yeah, and I think when money is your center for any business, like that's the only thing that you're really unless you're a bank mm-hmm. and that's your you know language. Um, it's probably not a great motive. I know yeah. that we all need money to live, but it's part like of the system, but. But like that, your motive should be to make the community better through wellness mm-hmm. and through like mindful meditations or like through, you know, movement and working on yourself or through giving yourself more time during your day to spend with, mm-hmm. you know, your family or doing the things you need to do. I don't feel like money should be the, the center of your like business drive. No. Mm-hmm. It just, yeah, we talk about that a lot too. Oh, mm-hmm. Hold on our camera. <laughs> Hi camera. It's, yeah, I, it's I really think, cool. No, think it's, 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 <laughs> I'm so really impressed that you did that. I was like, I love uh, it. Uh, <laughs> Do you need like a, a remote? turn on or something well i could actually do that um that's cool. actually a good idea i could just set up my phone just as like, like the remote to oh like is it like a bluetooth one or whatever? yeah um, or wireless or whatever yeah there's to. there's like wi-fi with the camera so you can yeah. actually yeah. like control it so I, i'm gonna try that next time you're good with all this like techie photo stuff too eh? you have a lot yeah. of side ambition and you can like push cars straight out of ditches yeah, I hear you can just yeah, like funny so <laughs> <laughs> RJ is a magical human I think a few things and a few skills that's right <laughs> and more time in the day than most people I do believe based on like we were talking about that yesterday where I was just like I was looking at my schedule being like I don't get how people work 40 hours a week because this week like I I guess because my days are so spread out and like my field of work you can't really quantify it on or qualify it sorry on hours because yes. there's so much background work behind it but I'm like I only have 37 working hours and then like a million prep hours but I don't count that and I just like I work 80 hours a week and I still have so much time to do stuff <laughs> like, I build lights and like yeah. know how to do like operate camera setups and like I have all sorts of cool tech things yeah. and I can lift everyone so, oh, so yeah I need to I can just pick everything up <laughs> maybe that's what it is maybe his mental health and physical health are so Strong enough, strong enough and connected enough they're like I can pick stuff up so I can mentally pick everything up it's true like <laughs> kind of how it originally did that's what it is. yeah, yeah. 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 yeah is sure. that where like it came from like yeah yeah I, I cool. would say so yeah, yeah like uh, <laughs> it's, it started with with the uh, the building of the physical strength um, and then I realized that basically like, well all skills 
as you said, like the the drive to learn new things. Like once you figure out that whole like growth mindset, yeah, and that you kind of everything's stopped. a learning opportunity. It's just like the more that you learn, the more it kind of like weaves together into this yeah crazy network that everything starts to make more sense. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think you also just let's have a little worship, RJ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you also like don't discredit your brain capacity because like, yeah. the the amount of information you take in on a daily is like I know that that's a practice muscle thing too, but I think that your memory is exquisite. Like you can remember that we talk all the time about like we've listened to the same podcast and I'm like with that guy and he'll say first and last name like and I'm like yeah was that the good. name like oh yeah very good recall. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I don't know. I, I, I still think some of that it's like very learnable though. It, it is absolutely as and, like yeah. it's a muscle you practice. And, and you yeah, I guess that there is a practice, but yeah. the, the name thing actually, I have to give a lot of credit to Josh for that yeah, because he's so passionate me, right? about the, the like the the name thing, and you know that's from his, his sort of overarching. Um, business go-to book is how to win friends and influence yeah. people by dale carnegie carnegie yeah. see and uh names and titles <laughs> names, titles and, and content, <laughs> names, <laughs> content. and, and you know so it's it is i don't know but it's funny that like it that doesn't really relate to the books and stuff but it just i guess it's just how the yeah how i it's schematize how, yeah, where things come from it's whatever, great though but, it's very handy it is yeah, if you ever need book suggestions, I'm just like, RJ, I need a book like this topic yeah. for this person with this interest. What do you got? Yeah. <laughs> I got something. Yeah. I like that, though. I like having kind of something to recommend to people also. For sure. Like, yeah. If they have a follow-up question. Yeah, Becca's a good go-to as well. I love yeah. that. Uh, but, okay, I have a question for you. Sorry, oh, yes. do you have things? No, I was just thinking. I was like, actually, I was just trying to remember. I never forget a dog name. Yeah. Also, you don't forget dog names I don't names forget either. dog names at all. Um, when we meet random dogs, like I'll remember, oh, that's Hunter or that's so-and-so. And, so or, or, and, 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 and I think that that is definitely a practiced skill, 100%. Like, I was always taught, if you remember someone's name or mm-hmm. what have you, like, that shows huge interest in them. And, like, yeah. it already creates, like, it's a direct yeah. connection. But, like, I think it works with animals, too, in that sense. It's like, oh, okay, I know this animal's name. Continue to call by that, obviously. Um, and then they are like, oh, you know, you know who I am. Why do you know... Why do you know my name? And then they get you, they get excited, right? They do. Yeah. The uh, the animal thing, hopefully, or your question. It's related hang, to animals. Hang on. I, I, <laughs> I'll I'm hold just, it. This one's a good one. I, I'm thinking it's really interesting. Um, I wonder if it has to do. You know, there's always with with animals it's like sort of this this purity of love right there's yeah. there's never yeah. the um there's never like the um the split in your sort of feelings yeah, towards they're not them. Dramatic and, and i wonder if that relates to it at all or i guess particularly for animal lovers i'm sure there's people that see like oh there's dog right yeah whatever there or that little <laughs> why would you thing. have that creature in here yeah you know? and yeah. they obviously the, i don't have people, those people in my life anymore <laughs> I don't really either, but I know I know of that. But it does exist. If you approach animals or people in that way, you're not going to remember their names because like you haven't built up like this connection. True. Yeah. Whereas if you really like animals or if you really like dogs, you're like there's something a little more special that like it it sticks to your heart and then you remember their name because you know it's it's really interesting though i actually freak people out sometimes like i'll meet i'll see them on at harold town and like they don't remember me (laughs) i've met their dog once i've met i haven't even met them yeah but i'll be like oh that's summer it's nice to see you and they're like do we know you (laughs) how do we know oh our dogs put together once. yeah yeah Yeah. one time (laughs) You've yeah. run you've run up to me on the trail one time. I got introduced to your dog. Yeah, I really liked. No, I know dog. them forever. My dog was nice. Yes, and I recognized their facial features. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting. It's like the same, the same thing, I guess, because people are like often zoning out when they go on their walks. It, totally. You know, they're they're in a whole different world. Maybe they are reluctantly walking their dog because yeah. it's a rough day or something, and um, not being present. So. They totally forget you, yeah. um, but the other, the opposite side of the coin is not true. Say, and my walks are of... very conscious, and as are yours, because you have oh. that's your job, right? But, but I, speaking about that though, like I love using walks for bad days. People are like, oh, how do you do it on like the coldest, coldest, coldest day, like the day where you're like, it's disrespectful outside. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is rude that your man is 24 and snowing. You know, I think it's just like once you get outside and you see how happy the dogs are. Oh, it takes it all. It takes everything that we think is like 
painstakingly like you know first world problems like i have to brush the snow off my car whatever it makes it just like go away and i think that like holds a lot of merit like that's why nature for me holds a lot of merit and like being out there holds so much weight for me because Mm -hmm. when you get out there and you see actually how the natural world interacts with each other and like dogs interact with that world it just makes it magical it literally every day i feel like my job is like a snow white magical wonderland (laughs) even when i'm like upset and angry or there's other things going on in my own life it's just like the dogs and seeing them outside and seeing like exactly things it's just that. like oh, <laughs> my heart so just much is, joy so it softens my little my, my little angry heart sometimes <laughs> yeah it's kind of fun when your job is your own medicine too. yeah I, it's really great I, I think that's like what people need to be doing though find your passion and like yeah. dive into it don't like I'm just gonna pick away no dive into it because I wish I did this sooner yeah. like, I wish I started this mm-hmm. like 10 years ago mm-hmm. um, you know what I mean I think it's just this is my calling this is where I want to be and I like that but also looking at it the other way you know uh, those 10 years were still opportunities to learn and acquire new skills so that now you know you you hit the ground really running and so yeah, maybe 10 years ago you were just the little slim. Maybe I was just doing a little ready to paint chip peel yeah. off the, what's in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I often I often feel the same way about um, mm. getting started, you know, when I did. Even, but those, like, basically 10 years of, of reading different books and, and, a, and learning things sort of. Yeah built up whatever the the stuff in my brain so that I was kind of ready to get going too. Yeah, so you feel um, prepared, I was right? going to say, because there's a lot of anxiety around starting a business. Like, oh, For yeah. sure. There's a lot of fear, but if you have that, you know, you, you can kind of trust fall into your own knowledge or mm-hmm. your own community. Yeah. It helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you're right, actually. Like, realistically, I wouldn't have had all the skill sets or probably the calmness or the chaos to deal with some of those like Mm -hmm. anxiety days where like the dogs are wildly being, you know, really attacking those spiky cats, AKA porcupines. And like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, I I think you're right. Like maybe I did have to go to Guelph and learn a couple like different like first aid things first or have to read a certain book about, Mm -hmm. you know, animal behavior in order to kind of understand those things. So yeah, I guess this is the time is now universe. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for this abundance (laughs) of wonderful. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask about like lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Yes, <laughs> they're coming. You have experience with wild animals. Yes, I do. And you have said yes to having them in your home now. Yes. Coming so up. talk about first of that, and yes. then how do you mentally deal with that? <laughs> yes. So I'm actually going to be partnering with a zoo coming up, um, and I'm going to be bottle raising their cubs. Um, bears lions uh, yes so lions wolf cubs and tiger cubs in the new season in the spring season um and it's going to be it's definitely going to be some work because i also have animals of my own i have kitties and um i'm adding another kitty uh shortly um and so it's going to be it's going to be a challenge but i think that realistically i'm looking forward to it because it's going to be a little bit different but what has to happen in zoo rescue animals is they have to be handled by people mm. um, because they generally are not going back to the wild, especially as a rescued animal. Um, they usually no longer can survive off of natural instincts, right? So having them in someone's home, bottle raising them is like a huge feature of like how they'll grow up in a, in a close habitat really right mm-hmm. um so yeah so i'm partnering with them and i'm excited and a little nervous i've done it before but um i'm excited to have like a lion cub in my house <laughs> not everyone can say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true and they do their claws are intense and yeah. they do have definite killing abilities uh, but not yet so yeah. like when they get to a certain age they no longer go outsourcing to people's homes but you have to have certain certificates and certain things that you oh, yeah. do to be able to yeah. handle wildlife like, that. like what does a day look like like what do you you get up um typically those days i won't be able to obviously walking dogs okay. um it's probably going to be on the weekends as so you're of right now dedicated to that. Yep. yeah okay. it's a 24-hour watch it's like a newborn oh i see okay. it's like a newborn for sure you're yeah. you're feeding every two hours 
Um, you are, you know, watching constantly. You're watching play. Yeah. I can't leave my house, obviously. No. Um, and then you no, return. You have a wild animal. Yeah, you house. return the animal. It's huh. a it's a twenty four hour stay. And do they use the bathroom outside? Yeah, they do. <gasps> oh my gosh. And their poops are like dog poops. You pick them up in bags. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like. They're not the they're not the nice dog poops either. No, so I like believe it's, that. It's, I'm Especially excited baby. that, that uh, hopefully there'll be a little bit of snow left on the ground, so it's like a little easier to pick yeah. up. But yeah. what a time! Yeah. So you've done it before. Yes. Like I would I would be scared shitless. There's a tiger in my house. <laughs> yeah. Like how do you how do you get why are you so brave? Like what? <laughs> I, <was> brave. <laughs> I think it's because I I and I I've always seen this even when I was a little kid. To me, all beings are beings. Like. I think that's why I was vegetarian from a really young age. I had really mm-hmm. struggled with the idea that I would eat my friends. Like, I was like, I don't, I don't like, mm-hmm. I don't want to eat my friends. Like, we're the same. We have the same value. So right. I think because I feel like a tiger is just a wild dog version of dog. Right. That in my brain, I don't equate it to like some sort of strange exotic thing that shouldn't live in my house. Right. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, another guest here. Perfect. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> wild guest that could probably kill everything. But like... I don't know. I think it's just the mentality that I'm looking at it with in the sense that it's just another four-legged animal. The scariness of it is definitely built up in the adult version of this animal also. I don't know that I would have a... I don't know that I can go like Mike Tyson and have like a straight-up tiger just like living (laughs) in my house. Although, that would be cool. That would be a little bit I would love that. I'd be like, yes, I am the tiger woman. Like, (laughs) but I would use that to my full advantage. Maybe we can take your tiger to Harold's house together. But that's just it. I think, yeah, I think I removed kind of the exotic idea from my brain mm-hmm. to kind of manage the situation just like okay this is an animal these yeah. are the needs you know it needs water it needs food it needs to go poop pee whatever and it has to sleep and it likely has to play so mm-hmm. if I, I could manage those things how do you play with a tiger yeah how do you play the with same way you the play same, with a cat eh? no way the same way you play with frank yeah frank's my cat yeah yeah, yeah cat <laughs> <laughs> same way frank would play with you that's exactly they mimic all of those things so like little balls of paper right. little strings laser pointers oh, like come on wildly so yeah that's wild yeah wow maybe maybe after you know raising the the small ones you'll want to <laughs> i was gonna get she's gonna adopt life. one for yeah. sure it's like this I is my bear cat because people people have them like full of grown and you know you see sure. the person that's hugging their their tiger and yeah it's like, who was that guy that there was the, oh my do you gosh remember that? yeah, or, the yeah. Guy, i forget his name but and the whitney houston clip like oh, the I one where know. the tiger ran at him that yeah. One? yeah 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 yes yeah. um yes because they had been reunited after like right like almost makes me cry yeah this is the other <laughs> thing too animals have a wickedly cool memory all insane, animals eh? yeah like people are like oh it's just elephants no 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 they all yeah. do. Like, yeah. You, and, and I believe every single time I see those videos, I'm just like, ah, ah, he remembered in my brain. But I'm also like, of course he did. Course. Like, that was a huge, probably part of his life that he was with that. Well, and they're so yeah. smell based, yeah. right? And yeah. like, yeah. smell is such a strong memory. That's why every dog is always like trying to sniff your crotch or your butt yeah. all the time. Like, your family? Or are you, you're, I've right. met you before. I know yeah. you. I know you. I know you. I know you. I'm really happy we don't sniff crotches to injury <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Unless you're Ace Ventura. Unless, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to start doing that. Yes, hello? Yes, hello? Oh, my gosh. Um, okay. Well, that's crazy. Um, can yeah. you... I hope this is not too invasive for you, but can you talk about, like, I know that you struggle with some pretty wild mental health yeah. issues. Yeah. Issues the wrong word, but you know what I mean. Yeah. That's the word they say. But, like, how do you, because sometimes I can collide with business. Like, how, I just want you to kind of give a little pep talk to all the brothers and sisters out oh, there yeah. that feel like they can't manage business because, yeah, you know, they've got some stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Like, what's your story there? Even on the hard days, it's mine. And I think that's also kind of echoing back to why I don't love the whole MLM thing. It's not theirs. They mm-hmm. didn't build it from the ground up. You don't have, if you lose that, it's fine. It's some corporate, whatever. This is mine. And so like, if I let, if on those really hard days where I'm finding I can't get out of bed and I'm really struggling to move forward, I feel like if I let the dogs not out, Who's going to let the dogs out? Yeah. 
who let the dogs out? Who? Me. Yes. Me. 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 Right? And so, like, I think I try and put, I do put, like, something over my mental health to get me out. Mm. That's my leverage. I don't know that that would work for everybody, but for mm. me, it pushes me out of my space. Because otherwise, if you're just sitting there in bed and you're just like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do any of this. Everything's mm-hmm. so overwhelming. And I've been there and I've gotten in those spaces before. But if I just remind myself that there's something outside of my brain mm-hmm. that needs me, I'm able to pull myself out that day. But I don't know that that's like something that would work for everybody. Right. I just think that you kind of have to find your own tools that work for you in your own mental health. Mm-hmm. It's not just going to go away by having a nap. Um, that's not something that happens and you have to be serious about it. So on those days also, when I know I'm really struggling, Mm -hmm. I take things a little slower. So like I'll move a little slower in my walks. I'll be a little bit more cognizant of like what's happening in my body that day. Mm -hmm. Am I having a lot of panic? Is it in my chest? Am I like okay mentally to be working? Because there's also like Mm -hmm. a point in time where you have to stop yourself and say like I'm no I'm so overworked yeah and I need to take a rest day and so I've learned that through business business has actually taught me that that rest days matter mm. and mm. it wasn't until I got into business that I ever stopped you know and so yeah so I think realistically that's kind of how I deal with it I try and look outside myself to get myself out mm-hmm. um, and if I'm struggling to do that I'll write it down like I'll write down grateful things great like I'll just try and just be grateful Mm -hmm. even if it's like the silliest thing I'm like I'm happy I have a toothpick to clean my teeth this morning after my bagel I'm happy I had a bagel you know like whatever it might be to like get myself out of that little funk yeah I really try to like push towards that but but kids it's not always easy Mm -hmm. also like it's not always that clean it doesn't always look like that sometimes it looks much messier it's me weeping getting myself out of bed you know Um, but I think we have to talk about it too in business, Mm -hmm. mental health in business. There needs to be more of that because it is something that entrepreneurs deal with all the time. Mm. And it's like on top of the self day. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. On top of like, okay, I need my business to succeed. And I want like, you know, I also would like to make an income and like, I want to be successful. And if I don't get out of bed today, like I'm not making an income, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of hardships that probably have to go through your mind before you know you commit to being an entrepreneur I would say but uh yeah these mental health and business this is like definitely something that I wish there was more openness about in the community because there's just not which is unfortunate I love places like this because we talk about it yeah Yeah. you know and like more entrepreneurs need to talk about their hard days because they happen oh gosh yeah oh my gosh yeah like if somebody doesn't show, or like, if I show up and a dog's not there or, like, and I'm having a bad day or, like, you know, somebody cancels on me last minute or something, like, those things can hit you, too, in mm-hmm. a different way, right? If, like, somebody doesn't show up for you, it's yeah. like, oh, well, cool. Like, I'm putting all of my hard work into this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you just have to take yourself out of your own mental health, kind of look back at it. Almost take yourself out of your own body. Look at yourself. Remind yourself that you got yourself here. Yeah. And then to just kind of like push forward. What do you, well, like, what do you guys do? Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> I would say the same idea. Like when, when it's, we've talked about this before too, and it's like, no one else is going to do it for you. No one else is going to walk your dogs for you or train yeah. your clients or help people flow. Right. And yeah. um, there's a fine line between like when that becomes bad for you to push yourself through like you have to know your limits and so we always talk about self-awareness yeah. and and knowing your limits and knowing your capacities but also I mean RJ's got all kinds of tips and tricks on just like boosting yourself and um you know those gratitude lists are big and journaling are is huge. big and yep. um that kind of stuff and I would personally I go to my community like I'll yeah. like RJ I'm struggling and he'll, yeah he'll just like Put me up on his pedestal, probably lifting me himself because he can with one hand, maybe. I don't know. One finger. <laughs> pushing, your, pushing your car off the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like literally. Literally. Literally pushing my car off the middle of the road when it's not working. But, so like for me, I usually reach out because I really, 
I do get stuck in my own head. I'm a huge overthinker. And so I can, it's really hard for me to look outside of myself on my own. Um, so for me, it's community, which is hilarious to say as an introvert, but like, I'll talk to Jordan, I'll talk to you, I'll talk to RJ, like my, my people and, uh, kind of go from there and get support. Yeah. Yeah. I'll definitely ask people on a walk too. If I'm really, if I'm really like Mm -hmm. struggling, I'll ask a friend that I know typically like Tulsi, Shelby, any, just anyone that I, Hillary, anyone that I generally would walk with or walk their dogs anyway, I'll ask them to come along with me, um, for that day if I'm really feeling it because community is a huge part of mental health. If you have support in Mm -hmm. that, oh my gosh, you're already like a thousand leagues above, you know, so many people. It's just nice to feel it like, yeah, you've, you've got the support, you've got a place to belong, even though your, your business is your own and no one else is in it with you. You still have people with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? What's your, well, so something that I think I, I'm curious to know that, that, I mean, my, my biggest go-to for one, I, I think, I, I don't know, I've got a lot of resilience, so I cannot um, say that I, I go through the exact same things. And obviously that's something that I'm fortunate, but I've been in and experienced it in many different ways for many years. So, I mean, I definitely can empathize with it in that way, yeah. but um, I'm sometimes trapped in here for 16 hours a day and getting outside to me is just one of the most powerful things that I've discovered in the last year, really in the last year, um, which is a unique feature of being a dog walker. And I'm curious to know, like once you're out there, do things start to feel different? Because I know I was just talking about it when I, on the video I did last week, but even if it's cold outside, Mm -hmm. the, and I just finished reading Brainwash, which um, has this interesting chapter yeah. on forest bathing and on the power of nature yeah. for all these things in our book. brain. Did you did yeah. you read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just actually finished it last week. I'm like, oh, oh, Brainwash, I just finished this. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's a whole chapter on forest bathing and, and on the, the power of nature and just the the um, the smells from yes. from nature actually like can the fragrance can mm-hmm. actually pass into the blood brain barrier and alter your brain waves and yeah. so there's a lot of power to being outside mm-hmm. and not being stuck inside or even plants they're talking about plants. how plants make a big difference mm-hmm. plants are huge and I, I love the resurgence right now of like i yeah. love plant yeah, bowls and peterborough tiny. i will send i will send people there all day they're amazing but like plants i love people are being plant parents if they're in everyone's homes right now and i love bringing nature mm-hmm. inside but you're 100 percent right like forest bathing is like it's a huge the moment i get outside into like a nature area mm-hmm. half of everything i felt that day drops mm-hmm. there's they've proven there's like microbes in soil that like help yep. reduce depression and anxiety and different things but not even just touching it just being just putting yourself out in like wilderness it like instantly brings you from like, if you're at like a 10 panic for me, at least it brings me to like a five mm-hmm. or like a four just by standing mm-hmm. outside yeah. in like a wild place. And then once you get moving, then you've got movement involved totally. too. Movement. And then there's usually, especially if it's cooler, you have like some breath work sometimes you have to do to yeah. work through some of those changes and weather and stuff. Like there's so much out there that's like mm-hmm. good for you. And I just, I encourage people constantly I'm like, have you been outside today? Have you been outside? I used to hate winter. It wasn't until I started dog walking that I even owned a winter pair of boots or a coat. (laughs) I didn't know. Like, I mean, I would go from my work in Toronto, because in Toronto you can get everywhere underground. Yeah. Yeah. I'd literally go from my house onto the subway. I'd go underground. I'd be in work all day. I would come back and I would return. And if it was winter, I would not step outside. Mm -hmm. That was was my commute. That was it. I'm sure that's many people's commutes. When they get up in their house, they get into their car, still kind of indoors. And they go to their office and then they return to their house and they're not going outside at all. Yeah. And they're probably so disconnected from that outdoor space. Yeah. You know, and it's like yeah. step into it for um, even like 15 minutes of your day and yeah. see how much that changes your mental yeah, health. Winter's yeah, winter's kind of funny, isn't it? Because it's yeah. like, it's like the cause and the cure of your problems. Like, yes. <laughs> you, yeah. like you, you feel this seasonal depression and a lot of people do. And then what will help it is actually going out into it. Yeah being yeah. a part of winter like it's it's kind of ironic that way but it really does yeah. help but you think of like I always relate 
because for me, my, my struggle is anxiety. Like I, I always relate that, um, you look at a wild animal, Mm -hmm. like if they're feeling anxious, they run, they find space, they pant, like they go Mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. And for us, we don't do that. We try to have a bath, which just makes you feel more trapped or you, you know, try all these self care things, put on a face mask. Oh, your anxiety didn't go away. No, we are animals. Like you need Mm -hmm. to move. So Mm -hmm. that movement piece, like actually calms your brain. If you're anxious, the best thing you can do is go for a walk. Yeah. Like it actually has been studied to show that that area of your brain where anxiety manifests is also the same area that makes you move fight or flight moving. Like it's, um, so nature, it gives you that space. You're running away to the woods yeah. or wherever you choose to go. Yeah. Um, you're moving, you're breathing maybe heavier. That breath work, like you said, if the weather changes, it's really cold. You have to adjust your breath to make sure that you're not yeah. going to hyperventilate. Um, but it's amazing. Like it's just, it makes sense. It's yeah. simple. Like it's not this profound, crazy thing. It's just, no. it just works for us. Yeah. I think too, like there's something in reflectiveness at the end of the day and I think that that's also something that has to play into your next day yeah. because and that's where I personally think things like floats and meditation and stuff like that mm-hmm. should come into play equally as much as nature should mm-hmm. because you have to have reflection mm-hmm. you have to have that time for yourself to actually look back and digest everything that happened in your day mm-hmm. if you don't have that I think you set yourself up to almost have like another anxiety filled day the next day. And I've noticed that personally in my own business journey, just like if I didn't sit down at the end of the day and just kind of go over, okay, what did we do today? How many dogs did I walk? You know, take stock of everything Mm -hmm. that happened or, you know, this bad thing happened today. How can we can prevent it tomorrow? What can I do to be prepared? If you don't take stock of your, like your thoughts, your inventory of feelings, I feel like you're setting yourself up the next day for, Mm -hmm. for sure. For failure. You don't know what you've got. Yeah, Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just, I think our businesses equally contribute to a really well-rounded type of community. Yeah. We can help you out. Yeah. (laughs) You need something. We got you covered. Okay, guys. We just can't feed you. We don't offer that. (laughs) Some other business will do that. I'm sure there's there's tons of food businesses downtown that are like so locally started that I would highly recommend over the chains Mm -hmm. for sure. I mean... (laughs) The, the final chapter in the 2020 vision course that yeah. I just launched in January is on reflection. Yeah. And, and especially, especially, well, for two reasons. Yeah. Whether it's for small business entrepreneurs or in anybody else's life, the reflection and, and what you just tied into is really important in asking yourself, was I effective with my day? Yes. You know, it's a very stoic thing to do and, and, um, like a lot of the stoic philosophers talk about being effective in your day, you know, like making the most out of the day, but asking yourself and getting into the routine or if it's the end of the week going, looking back, was mm-hmm. this an effective week means were you moving the needle forward in your business or in your life, whatever goals you have, because if you, if you don't take that time to reflect and ask that question, it doesn't take a lot or it could be in the middle of a meditation. Maybe you're spending a few minutes, 10, 20 minutes at the end of the day meditating, uh, or even in the, in the morning, but you can still do a little bit at the end of the night and just ask yourself that question, like, was I effective in whatever I'm trying to accomplish mm-hmm. long-term or short-term? Um, makes a big difference. Because yeah. then it's, and it's, I guess part of the trick is some people may get down on themselves, right? If they're like, yeah. no, it wasn't a good day, but... Mm-hmm. It's, it's okay. Like every day is not going to be perfect. Like every journey is not like a straight line up. It's, not at all. it's, yeah. it's like a roller coaster. Yeah. So it's okay. It's much more fun, isn't it? <laughs> Would you rather just like climb the hill of the roller coaster or well, do you want that little bit? Yeah. The, the answer, I mean, we know psychologically the answer is no, we don't want that. We don't want it. No. Like that's what brings um, interest and excitement and progress. And like appreciation. Oh, a hundred percent. You appreciate the climb so much more when you've fallen. Yeah. You appreciate that there's forward momentum going on, right? When you've seen the Mm -hmm. bottom. And I think I really like the word you use. Have I been effective with my day? Have I been effective with my week? Effectiveness is so much nicer than the word productive. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. productive at its core means you had to produce a product. Right. right? And I don't, I don't love that because it, Mm -hmm. for me, ties back in with like consumers and the whole thing. I like being effective with my day. 
Mm-hmm. Even if it's like a slow day, I have one walk or something like that. I got up, I did my walk. I feel like I've done my job. And mm-hmm. in those small victories, I think worshiping those has a lot more merit, a lot more weight when it comes to my mental health mm-hmm. than saying, I only had one walk today. Right. Yeah. You know, if you minimize your own achievements, obviously your mental health is going to take stock of that and your anxiety is going to be like, hey, you only did one thing today, I remember. That's it. Yeah, and then your yeah. self-worth goes down. And then everything just spirals. Yeah. So I think when you look at those kind of things, using proper language for yourself yeah. is huge too, mm-hmm. right? Like, we, did we have the episode on language? Or we just talk about it. Sure. I we forget. Sometimes our conversations blend together with oh, the podcast. Totally do. We never really know which ones we've covered. Yeah. Um, no, language is super important. Yeah. 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 This is where I struggle with like the whole hustle culture because, yes. yeah, you do work hard and it's mm-hmm. important to recognize that as an entrepreneur, like you work your butt off and you are invested in like you, your business is your child and sometimes you're up all night dealing with messes. Yeah. But. I think that if we set this precedent that you need to hustle or you're not yes. good enough, yes. you know, or like that's have just, to be busy. Yeah. It creates so much anxiety because then you're, you're stressed about, you know, if you're not busy, you're stressed about, I'm supposed to be doing something. What do I do? And then you feel this sense of purposelessness. That's a word, <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's like, I get really frustrated yeah. with that. Yeah. It's a, uh, I mean, I think that's something that I, I resonates with, I struggle with too, right? It's like everybody is preaching the whole hustle thing. Just um, keep being busy. It, it, you know, as much as it, it <laughs> yeah. does resonate with me, I do feel like I've got a pretty good balance with like finding the, the time and everything. Yeah. Like you said, you've got to take your time for yourself. If you're, mm. if you're in your own business, like yeah. you've, it's just, it's a necessity. Yeah. Right. You and have to that's your cup. even yeah. in brainwashed, like yeah. I know they're doctors, but it's a similar, it is a similar kind of mentality, right? Like yeah. it's 36 hours on 12 hours off and, uh, David developed mumps and chicken pox. He got his, so ill. And his son, mm. <laughs> I mean, I forget exactly whatever, but Austin, you know, he discovered nature as a way to yeah. combat the, the, just that funk that you get in when you're in the hospital for 20, 36 hours straight. Oh gosh, I can't and, and the last thing they want to do at the end of the day is get outside and move, but it's the best thing for you. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that there's a huge, I don't know. I find a lot of cures in the things we hate now, which is yeah. funny. Oh, big time. Really funny. Because when I was yeah. younger, I would push so hard against the, like the things that made me uncomfortable. And I'm like, okay, no, I'm going to get outside, even though I don't want to get outside right mm-hmm. now. And it's just like push past that, push past that monkey mind yeah, yeah. and try and do something like natural today. Yeah. Like a very natural thing that we would do without indoors and spaces. Sure. Yeah. Like that's something that uh, <sighs> my last therapy session was kind of all about was just finding wisdom and tension. Yes. Like there, that tension. Of, intention or yeah. intention? Ooh. In space tension. Wisdom <laughs> okay. inside the tension in your body. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Wisdom and tension. That'll be like my book or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> little play on words. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about like those those things that you're trying to resist so much. Yeah. Like there's clearly something there if you feel like you even need to put energy in either direction towards it, right? Yeah. Like there's something that you need to look into so that I don't want to go outside. Why? Why? Because you think it might take you out of your bad mood and then you can't have this misery loves company thing anymore. Like, is that what it is? Usually. Yeah. Or, you know, this helplessness of like, I don't have time to go to the gym. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. RJ works 80 hours a week and works out like daily or whatever you do. Like (laughs) I go for walks daily, but like, no, it's three, three times a week is the balance that I've figured out right now. Plus you you do Pilates and you, like you're, you're moving a lot. Like there's no one, there's no excuses for that. So for me, it's finding out the, why is there tension in your body? Why are you resisting this thing? Sometimes the actual resistance is like, this is bad for me. Yeah. You know, like this is not for me. There can be things that aren't for you and that don't fit for sure. But if it's just like, yeah, that tension of, I don't want to go outside because I'm very comfortable sitting on this couch and I'd rather mope. Like that tension is there telling you something about yourself. Yeah. You know? I I like to remind myself too, like, yeah, Beyonce has the same 24 hours in a day. She also has an entire team of people 
-hmm. You know what I mean? Like she has like massage therapist. She has trainers. She has a nutritionist. She has probably a personal chef making her meals. Mm -hmm. So like her day is really 24. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Her day is also like, (laughs) yes, Uh, it's wonderful. Um, But her day is also like, I break it down in that she has her own 24 hours, but then all of these people also have all of their own 24 hours. So it's really like what you bring to yourself, who you bring to yourself, what language you use in Mm -hmm. your own brain and how you surround your and frame your mental state that day. And then what you actually do. Uh I don't know. I feel like those things, if you can kind of like control those things in a way, or you can not control, I don't like that word, but if you can, what's a better word than manage, maybe manage. Yes. Mm -hmm. Manage. Maybe, um, kind of those things. I feel like you're set for the day. Yeah. It's just about supporting yourself. I think at the end of the day, like what, where, where do you need help? Yeah. You know, and, and how do you support yourself? It's like hiring employees for yeah. the business, right? You just, at some point, like you're not going to be able to do your admin, your accounting, your media, your, like at some point, hopefully your business flourishes so much that you just need to support yourself. You need, you need to a team. call in help. Same with your life. You know, we don't do life alone. Yeah. We can't like Ugh. try it. It's lonely and you get depressed like real quick. You need people. Introvert it's been or not. proven too, yeah. like multiple times that Human like need humans belong. need connection. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. And whether it be to me that like speaks beyond like person to person, of it's course. like we need connection to animals. We need connection mm. to the land. To me going outside is like, there's an odd ceremony in it, like a really beautiful like ceremony and just going outside and being with mm. nature mm-hmm. and not having to take from it or anything. Just like, just existing in it. it. Yeah, be part of it. It makes you, I think it also makes you feel small in a good way. Yeah. Definitely does. Not like it, it may it makes you realize that you are just really one part of like a huge interworking. And I think mm-hmm. making something bigger than yourself can help you get out of some of those mental spaces too. Yeah. 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 Our our friend Tony Francis. I um love Tony. <laughs> we send we send like pictures of space to each other a lot oh i love um, he's that got his favorite picture of all time is i think it's called the pale blue dot yeah you know with the carl sagan's yeah, yeah yeah um but i also just discovered this one of it's a photo that's i think 900 900 million pixels and it's got like Three billion stars in this one photo. Oh, cool! It makes me shiver. And, and you I don't can even basically know. you can basically like zoom in infinitely, and it's still perfect. Oh, that's Because cool. it's it's like compared to like our iPhone, it's I think like nine hundred times more pixels than Just a an few image. More pixels. So <laughs> it's probably it's probably a, about a I think like a thirty gigabyte image. That's like my something. whole storage capacity on my phone. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> I gosh. Can have that that, no, that sounds like really cool. I love the idea of infinite space. That's like a whole yeah. other topic. But like, <laughs> but like that to me sounds like the most beautiful thing you could look at when you're feeling it's, mentally low. It's really cool. So I'll, yeah. I'll link it in the description yeah. so that everybody can go and check this really amazing um, image oh, out. Awesome. And yeah. but, but like often because I'm here throughout the day a lot of my walks are under the stars and it's exactly that feeling of smallness <sighs> is, uh, cool. when, when it's not like gloomy overcast sure. yes. in the winter yeah. but there are a lot of winter does, stars are awesome yeah, though because yeah. there's no color distraction right yeah. like everything's just gray and white and yeah. so you look up i also love the moon yeah i just she's so pretty yeah moon. dude is so nice and like the last couple of days when it's been full it's been mm-hmm. like just absolutely so clear and yeah. you try and take a picture on your like little phone you're like this is not doing anything justice that's and what that, i love about the moon, that's though. also what i love about it like she won't show herself no the, the like, sun and the moon to me it's just like media. if you get out and yeah. you like look at them like get to experience them i feel like there's also like a connection there too because it's not something you get through photographs you have, mm-hmm. to, you have to be, be there. there to experience it for sure and i love that. that to me is like the the connection i feel in nature is also like how I we talk about religion sometimes on here, but like I believe that the God force is just what we call love, um, and yeah. I think that when you're connected to nature, like when you're actually present and you feel that the earth is supporting you and the trees are nourishing your lungs and the moon is watching over you, like you feel that, and it's yeah. just like I am small, but I am so cared for. 
Yeah. Like that to me is the, like the deepest experience of love that I could get. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that's why I like nature. Yeah, I think so too. I'm into it. I think it has a lot of weight for me in like many ways, but I think getting outside, I tell people constantly whenever they're telling me they're going through something, I'm like, have you been outside lately? Like, yeah, what? Why? Let's go for a walk. Why why are you asking me this? I'm like, no, I just mean like, when was the last time you were outside? Uh Because like, you can really get trapped in that indoor lifestyle that Mm -hmm. clearly is not made for us. I don't think, I think that's why there's been so many increases in, mental health awareness and For issues sure. and things like that around, you know, because we're not doing anything natural anymore, really. Mm-hmm. Unless you force yourself to. It's a choice at this point. Yeah. yeah. Tony Robbins has, it's, I, it just ties in really nicely. I want to like throw this in there. Mm-hmm. He's got this really, I, it's quite comical, this um, sort of rant about our boxed life, you know? Oh, and and yeah. so kind of like with this getting into wilderness, getting outside thing, um, being what we need compared to you know he talks about we um we we sleep on our box in our little (laughs) box house yeah we we get into our 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 box to travel to our box job where we have our box lunch and we look at our squeal yeah we're listening to this i'm like i hate it we we like talk to people on our box and then we you know get back in our box and go home and sit down and watch tv on this box oh no it's giving me anxiety about that like you're right though it's It's true yeah i think that's why he uh i think that's why it's powerful that it it came to mind about this and so i call my dog's crate is her box (laughs) she hates it it's yeah like she it's her little room but (laughs) and so that's the uh that's that's the whole thing. So like, huh. get outside of that yeah. box. Yeah, yeah, you get know? outside of your box, guys. Like, come shapes. on. <laughs> yeah, nature shapes. I yeah. think that's Hills. the thing. Nature has so much cool art so also available yeah. for you. Like, if you walk through Haroldtown, there's like entire sections that feel like you're in a oh different movie set. If you walk through there thinking you're writing like a novel for like J.R.R. Tolkien or something, or I'll like take a walk uh, through Shack Wacky. Oh yeah, my if you're part gosh, of it's just <laughs> there's so many different. Like, the trees will do weird things just because they grew in a specific way that they've made an archway or that they've, you know, spiraled up this other tree and it looks yeah. like a cool snake going around. Or there's yeah. one tree in Harold Town that literally looks like a it's hand, just, oh, like, coming that. out of the ground, like, with power, like, yeah. thrusting It really forward. does look like And it's yeah. like, that's so cool. And it's something that's bigger than me and it's something that's getting me out of my head. And I think those kinds of, like, natural distractions are also therapeutic in a way to kind of work through your thoughts because it makes you understand that, like, Mm -hmm. what really matters? Does me panicking over my timing today matter? Uh, Or, you know, if I was effective, da 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 It's like, no, none of that. Look at this, you know? Like, look at the beauty of this. And I think it kind of just takes you away and brings you back to a space where you can go back and look at those problems and see them in a different light. Mm -hmm. You don't have to see them in a... Yeah. yeah. Panic. Yeah, you've got space, and I think nature likes to hold you that way, too. Like, you yeah. can go there and scream, or you can go there and stomp your stomp. problems into the earth. Like, you can... It will take your shit. Yeah. And in return, just give you, like, good smells and warmth. Yeah. It's lovely. Get outside, guys. Yes. If you haven't gotten outside, <laughs> get outside. Take this podcast with you. There you go. You and can get outside. Yeah. yeah. Take but a sniff while you're I, I'd also <laughs> say, I mean, Tony and I were talking about this the other day, and... uh I think you can, pl- I think it's okay. You know, you can play the podcast or whatever to get started, but at some point turn that off and, and actually silence. like get into nature. Cause he, he was recognizing, you know, the, if you're going on a walk or whatever, um, and you're, you're listening to a meditation when you're on a walk, like maybe to kickstart it. Cause not everybody's able to get, yeah, into a mindful proper. state like we're because you know that disconnection syndrome that's talked about in brainwash and all that yeah you know a lot of people struggle with that that's why we're introducing guided meditations here yeah doing more mindfulness stuff because it is it's a skill that takes quite a bit of time to build up you don't just go into nature and appreciate the stars if like your mind's just like stuck on how many likes you've got on instagram yeah. you know it takes time mm-hmm. to get to that point mm-hmm. but that's why yeah. people don't feel rest on vacation to like the third day, of course, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah, we have to unwind our monkey mind first. And you're yeah. right. That takes practice. That takes concentration. It takes self-determination mm-hmm. also to want to work through it because there's many people, I think, that enjoy the distraction of, mm-hmm. you know, the little box life. They yeah. enjoy that. And that's fine. But, like... I just want to tell those people that there's so much more beyond this. Yeah. yeah. Join me. <laughs> I think that for me, like sometimes I'll listen to podcasts at the start of a walk as well because, yeah. um, because I can't unwind my monkey mind. And I find the podcasts that I listen to are not just for pleasure. Like they always give me that whoa moment of just like, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then that triggers my sense of wonder. And yeah. then I take out my headphones and yeah. I'm like, look at this space. That's great. Like yeah. that's kind of, what it does for me. Yeah. And it also helps me time my walks. I'm like, okay, I've been walking for an yeah. hour and a half now. That's good. <laughs> Cause I, I don't forget. <laughs> yeah. I typically don't listen to music or podcasts typically on walks. Well, usually cause I'm watching dogs and I, yeah, I want to be full attention there. But if I have gone out and listened to music or podcasts, it's very brief and it's definitely like as a warm up moment. And then I want to be like, in the annoying. sound of nature yeah. because it is like really cool and beautiful. Really cool. And cool. But yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, well, this was so much fun. There you go. Also, thank you so Isn't much for having me on. Every time? Okay. I loved it. Um, so where can people find you before we sign off? Yes. Where do people find you? Um, I have a website also that New Foss Media graciously put together for me. Yeah. Um, and it's pausptbo.com. And then I also am on Instagram, which is where most people find me. It's where I share all my stories and fun stuff at pausptbo and uh, Facebook as well. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. All right, thanks so much, Becca. Thank you, guys. Sunday up.